Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my charcoal portrait of Kurt Cobain of the band Nirvana. It's a very large portrait and I'm going to take you through the drawing process. I'm just moving it around a little bit so that you can see all of it. Now let's get to it. So I already had a simple sketch before I started working. It's a very very simple sketch, just a few lines here and there, but one of the first things that I did here, I started working on the background and um, I wanted to create a slightly darker background. And to do that I used mostly charcoal powder and I create that charcoal powder by sharpening my pencils and I used one of the larger brushes I have to push that charcoal powder around and to create that darker background. So I'm going to create a background that's dark enough for my main subject to stand out and I'm going to try to create some contrast between uh, some of the highlights in his hair and the background. And some parts of the portrait will stand in contrast against the background while others with others there won't be quite as much contrast and you'll see how I plan to do that. So I did a bit of blending with my finger and with a brush because now these two tools have slightly different effects. Uh, when you push the charcoal when you're, with your finger it tends to become a little bit darker than when you push it around with a brush. So here I started working with a charcoal pencil and most of the work is going to be done with this medium charcoal pencil. I basically use two grades most of the time, the medium one and the soft one. These are Warrison woodless charcoal pencils if you're wondering uh, what tools I'm using. But in addition to them I also like to use vine charcoal and uh, a black colored pencil here and there for some of the details. For the highlights and the lighter shapes I like to use erasers such as this Kohinoor uh, Hardmouth pencil eraser on the right and I also use a kneaded eraser which is a Faber-Castell kneaded eraser. So as you can see here I started working on the hair first and I first laid down some of the darker shapes to try to separate the hair into segments but I quickly realized that I'm going to have to cover most of that area with a little bit more value so I picked up a piece of vine charcoal and I started spreading that around using a softer brush so you can see now that this left side of his hair is starting to get a little bit darker and that is of course necessary even though he's blonde because um, it doesn't matter how light or how blonde his hair is when it's in the shadow it's going to appear darker. Um, <clears throat> I also did a little bit of work under his chin but then I got back to working on the hair. Uh, there are some darker values, areas of darker value around the top of the head and around his parting. Uh, but one of the most important things when you're drawing hair is to try to separate it into segments because Naturally, you can't draw every single hair, whether we're talking about um, hair of lighter color or a darker hair, you can't draw every single hair. What you need to try to do is you need to try to create something that kind of looks realistic. And to do that, you often have to use your blending tools a lot. One of the most useful blending tools when drawing hair, in my opinion, are brushes because uh, when you use them in a back and forth motion they really allow you to create a look of uh, nice smooth straight hair so this is especially useful when you're trying to, uh, to draw straight hair so again on the top of the head here I added a bit of darker value because uh, that's where we have a little bit of shadow and there's also going to be a bit of shadow on the right side of his hair so you can see how even though the background is dark some parts of my main subject will stand out against the background 
uh, because they are of darker value. Others will stand out because they are of lighter value. While some parts of the portrait will not stand out as much because there won't be quite as much uh, contrast. This is uh, just a way of kind of uh, emphasizing certain elements of my composition so that the viewer can immediately focus on whatever it is that I want them to focus on. So here I'm drawing the eyes and the pupils and of course uh, there's uh, th there are reflections or highlights in both eyes in both of, both of the eyes and as always in order for the reflection to stand out you have to shade all around it and uh, you have to shade even the white of the eye with at least a little bit of value and that way the highlight will really stand out now normally I don't like to draw the highlights by erasing I like to reserve the white space and work around it and if I accidentally put down a little bit of charcoal on it here and there I just try to clean it up using a kneaded eraser but I usually try to avoid that uh, to, to prevent that from happening so here I'm drawing the eyebrows and this transition area between the eyes and the nose and the eye uh, sockets and um, this was a little bit tricky because he is very blonde and his eyelashes as well as eyebrows are of lighter color but they can appear darker when they are in the shadow and this is a fairly dark portrait I think this reference photo was taken from um, I don't know a photo that appeared on a cover of a magazine or something and um, in my reference photo I couldn't really see all of his head and all of his hair so I had to improvise a little bit and add some of the stuff uh, but you usually have to make some changes to a reference photo so that's kind of unavoidable notice the highlight on the eye on the right is a lot darker than the one on the left that's because the whole eye is in the shadow and uh, that's why everything is darker there so here I did most of the shading on the eyes and around the eyes. And I'm going to try to add a few more details on these lower eyelids and make some suggestions of eyelashes for now. Um, but I'm probably going to be going back to that and refining it a lot more a bit later. But in this stage it's important for me to put down some of these darker areas so that I can kind of immediately give myself and the viewer some idea about the overall shape about the overall topography of the face now I know that at this stage it didn't really look like him that much but that was because like I said I was kind of uh, trying to put in these larger areas of dark value and establish these larger relationships between areas of lighter and darker value but at the same time I kind of struggled honestly I struggled to understand some of the things that I saw in my reference photo for example uh, around the mouth uh, the mouth appeared or the upper lip appeared a lot thicker and larger than it normally does on most of his other photos and later I realized that his mouth is actually probably half open and that I needed to make some adjustments there as well I also made some adjustments to the shape of uh, the nose as well as you will see and of course there's also the facial hair because <clears throat> here you can see I'm uh, trying to make some adjustments to the shape of the nose uh, because the shadows around the nose uh, can often kind of uh, they define the shape of the nose the nose is part uh, a part of the face that kind of sticks out a lot and you need to be very careful when shading it so that you can explain its shape to the viewer because uh, it's protruding towards the viewer and you need to shade its sides properly so that 
the viewer can get a, can, can get that feeling of depth. It's a very uh, three-dimensional uh, part of the face, I guess. And uh, occasionally, I'm just uh, kind of carelessly shading some larger areas and spreading that with a brush. And I don't really care too much about the texture at this point because I am going to be refining all of it with my blending tools and I'm going to be adding some more value almost all over the place and um, that's not going to be a problem. So I started talking about the facial hair. Uh, that's another challenge I guess because because he's blonde his facial hair is also a little bit lighter but again because it's in the shadow it can appear quite dark and one of the challenges with facial hair is that it can often kind of distort um, facial features or can trick the eye into uh, what the the actual shape of the mouth and the chin is uh, so th these are just some of the things that the artist keeps uh, kind of processing and thinking about and uh, re-evaluating as uh, he is working and studying his reference photo. <coughs> the lower side of the nose is usually a little bit darker because the light, uh, the light source is usually coming from above. But even when the light source is coming from above, it's usually coming more from one side than the other. And in, in this case, the left side is the light side. It's a little bit lighter and you can see that the nose and uh, the eyebrows and the mouth and the chin, they're all kind of casting a little bit of shadow to the right. So now you can see that I'm making a little bit more progress with these larger dark areas and that his face is starting to look a bit more like the actual singer. Um, this was a commission portrait. I don't really know that much about his music, to be honest. I wasn't a great fan. I just like to listen to a different, different type of music, I guess. So I couldn't really see the top of the head there and I had to improvise a little bit. So. Eventually I realized that I needed to add a bit more hair on top because I wanted to get the shape of the overall shape of the head to look to, to make sense I guess. And another thing is that I'm drawing these highlights using a pencil eraser. Again, this is that Kohinoor pencil eraser or an eraser and a pencil that I mentioned at the beginning. It's an eraser that can be sharpened. It's basically a piece of rubber in a wood casing. So it's not a one white pencil because sometimes people are confused and they keep asking me, what is that white white pencil that you're using? I'm not really using a white pencil. It's just an eraser. It's just an eraser. And I used it to draw some highlights on the upper part of his hair on the left where there would be a little bit more light and a little bit more reflection from the light source. Here I'm moving in with a black colored pencil and I'm going over some of these areas which I shaded very lightly and I'm adding a little bit more value and also a little bit more texture to them. One of the things I like to do with a black colored pencil is I like to use it not only as a shading tool but uh, I like the texture it produces and I like how it allows me to control the amount of texture because with charcoal pencils one of the problems is that it's kind of difficult to control the amount of value and if you put down some darker charcoal pencils like these woodless charcoal pencils which are made out of compressed charcoal you can sometimes produce too much texture and if you start blending that um, you can make it a little bit too dark and then you have to take away value. But when you use uh, a black colored pencil you can actually build on that 
base value that you, that you already established. And in the case of his forehead, it was very, very light uh, value. It was a very small amount of value. You can kind of build on that using a black colored pencil. And you can also add some uh, finer details on top, maybe some, uh, uh, I don't know, wrinkles or pores or some suggestions of texture to create a more realistic looking skin. And I find that a black colored pencil combines really well with charcoal. It uh, works better with charcoal than a graphite pencil because graphite is a little bit too light and too reflective and you can only use uh, hard uh, graphite pencils but it can be a little bit difficult to combine them. A black colored pencil is actually much easier to combine with charcoal as long as you remember that it's either waxy or oily and that's, that it's usually a good idea to put down the charcoal first and then work with a black colored pencil rather than the other way around. Anyway, uh, the thing about the hair on the left is that I need to establish enough contrast between the hair and the background and I do not want to create a very clean edge in all of the places, but I do want to have a sufficient amount of contrast. I want to avoid a halo effect where it appears like his hair is glowing uh, or his head is glowing. So I don't want to achieve that kind of effect. But at the same time, because there are a lot of these smaller flyaway hairs on the left, I kind of want to make sure that... Um, we get that feeling of messy hair with a lot of these strands flying away to the side. I also shaded the right side of the paper as you can see so now most of my background is already shaded and as you can see the right side of the hair is going to be a lot darker so that's the shadow side and I made that side of his head so dark so that it stands against it stands out even against a dark background so it's even darker the, than the background and I wanted it that way because I couldn't make the background too light I can make the background on the left a little bit darker but I don't want to make it uh, too too much too different than the one and then the part of the background on the right so I used a larger brush to kind of smooth the background a little bit and then I used the charcoal on that brush to go over the face a bit more and add some value on the lower part of the face. Normally the lower part of the face is a little bit darker than the upper part of the face because the upper part of the face is usually getting more light from above and the nose is usually getting a little bit more light than the rest of the face just like the forehead because the nose is kind of sticking out a little bit and the same goes for the cheekbones and some of the other areas which are usually lighter unless you have a, a different kind of uh, light source maybe light that's coming from below or, a si or, or from the side or something like that be that as it may as you can see on the top of his head uh, I have an area of slightly darker value around his parting but I didn't want to create too much contrast there. I kind of want to um, uh, create areas where there is less contrast as you're approaching the top and the bottom of the paper and I want areas of high contrast and high texture at the very center of the paper so that the the thing that is in the center immediately immediately draws your uh, attention and as you can see I am again uh, going back and drawing some highlights with a pencil eraser but these are some of the final touches on that upper part of his head on the left because I now have a sufficient amount of value and I put in sufficient amount of detail so I probably won't be modifi modifying it too much anymore so I, I'm pretty happy with the way uh, that top of the head on the left turned out and eventually I'm gonna have to move down uh, the left side of his hair and define uh, define the rest of that hair kind of break it into segments and shade it a little bit um, 
so this is a very difficult portrait and now I'm going to talk about some of the general challenges that you face when you draw such a large portrait. One of the problems is that when you're recording it's so uncomfortable to draw on such a large piece of paper and this uh, paper is about 12 times 17 inches in size so it's not huge but because the face is covering pretty much all of the paper it's actually a pretty huge portrait and now I'm putting in the facial hair using a medium charcoal pencil and uh, I'm going to be adding some highlights there a little bit later so do not be surprised if the facial hair appears a little bit too dark in, in this stage that's usually what happens before you start adding some highlights or shading it and the same thing happens with the hair for example if you draw the hair first and shade the face later uh, then the hair can appear really dark uh, it can appear brown or even darker than that but when you start shading the face uh, as that uh, value of the of the hair interacts with the with the amount of value on the face it kind of starts to appear lighter so back to what I was saying about uh, challenges uh, when you're drawing larger portraits you have to keep um, zooming in and out of your reference photo and I have my reference photo on an iPad in front of me so you have to keep uh, readjusting the amount of zoom so that you can both see the details but also it's important to zoom out so that you can see the larger relationships between uh, larger parts of the face and another thing that you have to do is you, you have to keep stepping away from your own paper from your own portrait so that you can check whether your, for example, your uh, dark areas are dark enough, whether they are in their proper place. And this can be a very difficult process because, like I said, first of all, it's pretty uncomfortable. But at the same time, uh, you have to keep going back and forth, adding a little bit of value here and there, then taking away a little bit of value. And there are parts of that process where you can feel like... Uh, this doesn't look like the person I'm trying to draw at all uh, but then just a minute later uh, it's it looks okay here I used a bit of vine charcoal on his left side of the face and on his cheeks to try to define that part of the face a little bit better because I felt that uh, this needed a little bit more value <coughs> And I think he's wearing some kind of a white shirt or a white t-shirt under that sweater. So I defined that collar area a little bit. I still haven't decided to tackle the lower part of his hair. I'm going to do that a little bit later because I still have a lot of shading to do on his face. At this stage, I still really wasn't happy with his mouth or the facial hair and here I started using that pencil eraser again to draw some highlights uh, on his facial hair because uh, even his facial hair is a little bit lighter so we're gonna have some highlights in there maybe some of these lighter hairs which are sticking out and maybe getting a little bit more light from the light source so I started uh, working on those a little bit patiently adding a few of these lighter hairs here and there um, when you ha when you're doing this you have to try to make sure that your pencil eraser is pretty sharp because otherwise you won't be able to erase these nice clean lines if you can find a Tombow Mono Zero eraser that will give you even more precision but this one also works pretty well Uh, so this was a challenging large portrait, uh, portrait which took several hours to draw. I compressed it into a half an hour video here for YouTube, which I think is still a fairly long video. Here I'm going over some of the darker details around the eyes with a soft charcoal pencil to create an extra element of depth there. And adding a little bit more shadow under the chin. 
and in some other areas where I feel like uh, I would gain a little bit more depth by using that soft charcoal pencil which I normally use pretty sparingly because I do most of the work with a medium charcoal pencil so I think this is still a fairly long uh, video where you can see some of the stuff I did and some of the techniques I used and here I'm shading the lower eyelids a little bit and you can see that even some of the eyelashes are a little bit lighter and I pulled those with a pencil eraser um, and I'm also doing a bit of shading around the nose trying to define the shape of the nose a little bit better and make sure that it doesn't appear too wide or too big if you want to see longer videos like really long full-length videos you can go and check out my patreon I have dozens of full-length narrated videos on my patreon and I always make new ones I can usually make a few of them a month but I also have some other types of content like uh, some of my sketches work in progress and some of the other things that you might may find interesting um, if not, you can just uh, check out my other YouTube videos because I have plenty of portraits as well as landscapes, wildlife and, and some other stuff. I mostly work in charcoal, but uh, there are also drawings in colored pencil, pastel, graphite, etc. So the facial hair is starting to look a little bit better. And I'm starting to add a bit more detail around the mouth. Um, also, I would like to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to click the notification icon so that you wouldn't miss any of my videos. Um, I'm just refining some of the smaller details on the face because uh, before I move on to the <coughs> rest of the hair and the that sweater whatever it is that he's wearing and notice his eyes and notice how much value there is in the whites of the eyes uh, in order for those highlights to really stand out like I said you have to shade the entire eyeball which is a round shape essentially and when you shade it properly the highlight will really appear shiny and stand out so here at this stage I was kind of trying to figure out how uh, long his face actually is from my reference photo which I which was kind of dark actually and um, it was a little bit difficult to make out some of the details and uh, eventually I decided to draw a bit of darker value in between his lips to make it look like his mouth is half open because uh, when I studied the reference photos his upper lip appeared a little bit too thick he has kind of or he had rather um, kind of thin lips so I modified that a little bit and I think now it looks a lot better and I think that I have achieved a, a lot greater degree of likeness so what I need to do now is try to define the outer shape of that hair uh, kind of spruce it up a little bit add a few flyaway hairs a little bit and make sure that I have a nice contrast with the background but also uh, that I can um, break up that lower part of the hair into some segments and make some sense out of it. As you can see, I decided to uh, make the lower part of his uh, body around the shoulders and the chest a lot darker and I'm going to make it kind of fade into the darker background if that makes sense. So uh, remember what I told you, I wanted some parts of my portrait to stand out in contrast against the background while others would kind of fade into the dark background. And here I picked up my medium charcoal pencil and started working on that lower part of the hair on the left and breaking it into some segments so that I can kind of define its structure and give it a little more depth. And all the way on the left the lower left I'm gonna to have to 
uh, draw some flyaway flyaway strands to make it look like actual hair. I'm sorry that my footage here went a little bit blurry so I'm doing my best to explain what I'm doing. I, I'm going over this area now with a brush and even though it appears a lot darker now once I start drawing the highlights it's going to look a lot better. And also notice uh, that I kept going over this area of the background to the left because I really wanted to, share, to make sure that I don't create that halo effect around the hair. I wanted the hairs to stand out in contrast against that dark background. And I'm back to using that pencil eraser. Um, you can see how uh, cautiously I'm approaching this because even though I do have that piece of glassine paper under my hand there's already a ton of charcoal uh, on the paper already and uh, I don't really want to mess it up so I have to kind of lift up my hand a little bit which makes it a little bit difficult to work and it's it's a little bit difficult to achieve a degree of precision that I need to draw here here but I think it'll be enough for me to to make some highlights. Then I went back to the upper part of the head and I refined some of the highlights at the top of the head where I felt like the light source would be hitting uh, that part of the head and I felt like that part of the head would appear a little bit lighter. So I just I'm kind of re-evaluating the drawing and putting down some finishing touches. Here I put my signature in the lower right corner and that's pretty much it. I'm going to move it around a little bit so that you can see all of it. Uh, that's my charcoal portrait of Kurt Cobain. I hope you like it. Don't forget to check out my other videos. Please give me a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye for now.